welcome to this video on complex numbers. Today we will see all your doubts in complex numbers as well as few of the doubts which you had in matrices. We will also look at a few of the previous JEE questions as well. Okay, so let's get started. So first let us discuss complex numbers doubts and previous JE questions. The first question mod of z minus 4 is less than mod of z minus 2 then its solution is So whenever we get this kind of questions, you have to assume z as x plus i y less than this is x plus i y minus 2. So how, how do you write mod? This I can write it as under root of x minus 4 whole square plus y square. This again less than under root of x minus 2 whole square plus y square. Square and root will get cancelled. So x square minus 8x plus 16 plus y square less than x square minus 4x plus 4 plus y square. Now the next step what will happen here if you are observing that here what is happening is the x square x square got cancelled on both sides y square y square got cancelled on both sides. So this we can write it as 0 less than what is this I can send this to the other side I can um, also send this to the other side right so minus 8x plus 4x is nothing but 4x 4x this will be minus 12 so 4x minus 12 is greater than 0 basically or x is greater than 3 so what is this x now? This x is nothing but the real part, right? So this real part of z is greater than 3. That's the answer. Second question. If mod of z minus 4 by z equal to 2 then the maximum value of mod z then the maximum value of mod z is so how to do these kind of questions okay so this part can I write this as mod of z plus 4 by z minus 4 by z that will give us z right you need mod z right so can I write it as plus 4 by z minus 4 by z again why am I writing in terms of plus and minus please why am I writing in terms of plus and minus because that is given in the question so whenever we get the maximum type whatever is given in the question we have to write it in that format now we know z minus 4 by z right so what I can do is this I can write it as z minus 4 by z plus 4 by z. So this is like some z1 now. This is like some z2. So how do we write this now? This you can write it as less than or equal to mod of z minus 4 by z plus mod of 4 by z that is given as equal to 2. Now simply speaking what is this part? This part is nothing but 2. Right? So this part is nothing but 2.
so we are asked to find out this right so this part is nothing but 2 plus this part is what 4 by mod z correct so we are basically getting that mod z is less than or equal to this correct so this is all mod z right so mod z so mod z if you want to expand this that will be less than or equal to this now can i just simplify this if i simplify take lcm and all you will say mod z square minus 2 mod z plus 4 that should be less than or equal to 0 so basically this is like a quadratic equation right ax square plus bx plus c equal to 0 so root will be what the root will be minus b plus or minus under root of b square minus 4ac by 2a correct b square minus 4ac understood so minus b is 2 plus or minus okay this is minus 4 pardon so this will be plus 60 so 2 plus or minus root 20 I can write it as root 5 into 2 so what is this basically now this is 1 plus root 5 and you have 1 minus root 5 so basically I can say mod z will lie between 1 minus root 5 and 1 plus root 5 understood so the maximum value will be what this part which is 1 plus root 5 so root 5 plus 1 is the final answer so any maximum minimum sum you can do it in the same process is that clear everyone let's move on to the third question mod of z1 plus z2 whole square plus mod of z1 minus z2 whole square is equal to and they give you options so for this i will just give you a hint just assume z1 as 1 plus i z2 as 2 plus i and verify options simple and straight fourth question if z is a complex number of unit modulus so basically they give mod z equal to 1 then arg of then arg of 1 plus z by 1 plus z bar is equal to and argument is theta theta is the argument theta is the argument okay options are pi by 2 minus theta theta pi minus theta minus theta okay so let's do the solution here now can i write this z as something why what is this z basically z value should be 1 so what i will do is i will just take the z value as some i i will take z value as i so what will happen R of 1 plus i by 1 minus i we are getting correct what is 1 plus i by 1 minus i we had seen right in the previous sessions 1 plus i by 1 minus i is again i what is argument of i argument of i means 0 plus i again right tan inverse 1 by 0 tan inverse infinity this is basically so basically
So this is basically a theta. This is theta. Okay. So basically what we need to do is we need to find out the value of theta. So what is theta now? Theta is tan inverse 1 by 0 which is nothing but pi by 2. Now let's check. Will you get pi minus? Pi minus you only get when it is negative, right? Now observe this. This is pi by 2 minus theta. Pi by 2 minus theta is what? Pi by 2 minus pi by 2. We are getting 0. Not possible. This is what? Pi by 2? Possible. Minus pi by 2? Not possible. So second option is the answer. We eliminated this because pi minus something you will get only if it is a negative sign. Next question. Fifth question. If Z is a complex number, then minimum value of imaginary of Z power 5 by imaginary of z whole power 5. By imaginary of z whole power 5. Options minus 1, minus 2, minus 4, and minus 5. So first things first, can I assume z as something? They said z is a complex number. Can I just assume z as i? Let's check what will happen. Imaginary of z power 5, that is i power 5 you have to do. So you know i square is minus 1, right? So this will be imaginary of minus i. So this will be minus 1 basically. So numerator part here is minus 1. What about denominator part? Imaginary of z whole power 5. Imaginary of z is what? 1. 1 whole power 5 is 1. So the answer is minus 1. So just by assumption and solving, we'll get pretty easy. Next. If z is a complex number, z is given as 1 plus ai and also given a is greater than 0 then 1 plus z plus z square up to so on 1 plus z plus z square up to so on z power 11 is equal to the options given to you are 1, 3, 6, 5, root 3i minus 1, 3, 6, 5, root 3i minus 1, 2, 5, 0, root 3i 1, 2, 5, 0, root 3i Let's solve this. First things first, what can I give my a value? a is greater than 0, I said. None of the options have a. So let me give a value 1. So what will you get? You will basically get 1 plus a. Now what does this look like? This looks like z power 0 plus z power 1 z square up to so on z power 11. So this is like a finite GP. What is the first term? First term is z power 0 or 1. What is n terms? Totally 12 terms are there. What is finite GP? A into r power n minus 1 by r minus 1. Sum of n terms in a GP. Now we need sum to 12 terms. So S12 is what now? A which is 1. r power n. So 1 plus i whole power 12 is what we need basically minus 1 by r minus 1 r minus 1 is 12 
r minus 1 is 1 plus i minus 1. Let me just erase and write it again. Oh, this is R, right? Okay. So let's take that question again. 1 plus z plus z square up to so on they said up to z power 11. So what did we take? We took a as 1. R as what? R is what? Z basically. And Z we assumed it as 1 plus i. Okay. So what else did we mention here? N value was 12. So the formula was S12 A into R power N minus 1 by R minus 1. A value is 1. R value is Z basically. Z power 12 minus 1 by Z minus 1 basically. What is Z now? 1 plus i. Whole power 12 minus 1 by 1 plus i minus 1. Minus 1 minus 1 cancelled. So this I can write it as 1 plus i whole square whole power 6 minus 1 by i basically. What is 1 plus i whole square? You already know that 1 plus i square plus 2i basically. i square minus 1 this is basically. So 2i whole power 6 you get. So this is 2i whole power 6 minus 1 by i. So just simplify this. What is 2 power 6? 2 power 5 is 32. Uh, 2 power uh, 6 is 64. 64 i power 6 minus 1. So just simplify this, you will get the answer. Pretty easy. Okay. So this is when no condition is given. What if this give you a condition, right? What if they say something like there's a second case to this, case 2. When they mention z equals to 1 plus a i, a greater than 0, they say that z cube value is a real number. So what do you have to do? Basically, you have to do z cube solve real part should be equal to 0. With that you will get your a value. Then again same process you have to follow. When no condition is given you get the answer like this. This is when no condition given. When a condition is given you have to do it in this way. Understood I suppose. Seventh question. If z belongs to a complex number, then the equation 2 times mod of z plus 3i minus z minus i equal to 0 represents what? Options are a circle with radius 8 by 3, second a circle with diameter 10 by 3, ellipse with major axis as 16 by 3, ellipse with minor axis as 16 by 9. So let's do this, it's very simple. So whenever we get these kind of questions, what do we do here? We can just write z as x plus i y, right? So this will also be x plus i y. So this will be what? 2 times under root of x square plus y plus 3 whole square. This is equal to what? Under root of, so this minus I am taking it to the other side, x square plus y minus 1 whole square. Now you can square on both sides. Square and root will get cancelled. So 4 times x square plus y plus 3 whole square. 
equals to x square plus y minus 1 whole square. 4x square plus, this I can write it as 4y square plus 36 plus 6 into 4 which 24y. I am just expanding and multiplying this 4 in as well. That is equal to x square plus y square minus 2y plus 1. So it goes to the other side. This becomes 3x square plus 3y square plus 26y plus 35 equal to 0. Let's check once again. This is 4 times. This is x square plus y plus 3 whole square. This is be y square plus 6x plus 9. y square will be 4y square. Uh, 6y into 4 is 24y. 9 into 4 is 36. This is x square plus y square minus 2y plus 1. So this is 3x square. This becomes 3y square. This becomes 26y and so on. So what is this now? This looks like a circle, right? So you can just divide by 3 everywhere. So what will happen now? You will get uh, g as 0, f as 26 by 3, uh, <coughs> c as 35 by 3. You know radius formula, right? Under root of g square plus f square minus c. Simple answer you will be getting with this. So just do it. You will get the answer. Next question, we are doing the eighth question now. The equation, imaginary part of, the equation imaginary part of iz minus 2 whole divided by z minus i plus 1 equal to 0, plus 1 equal to 0 represents a circle having a radius represents a circle having the radius options 1 3 by 4 1 by 2 and 2 now let's solve this again so this is what imaginary part of how do you write z? z is nothing but x plus i y. So I am just simplifying this. So this becomes what i x minus y minus 2. This is what x plus i y minus i. So this part is given as minus 1 basically. Now how do you find out the imaginary part of this? So you need to rationalize for obvious reasons. So what is this now? This I can write it as minus of y plus 2 plus i x. This is what now x plus i times y minus 1. So I can rationalize by writing x minus i times y minus 1. This is also x minus i times y minus 1. So I have to still simplify this. So how will you simplify this now? I only need the imaginary part, please. I only need the imaginary part. So now you can do something very logically or conceptually. If I need imaginary, that means what? This imaginary I have to multiply with real, right? Imaginary, when will you get? When you multiply imaginary with real part. If you multiply real with real, you will get real. If you multiply imaginary with imaginary, again you will get real. Why? Because i square is minus 1, right? So only case I can take is from uh, the first term you multiply imaginary with the second real or second imaginary with first real so this will be what i times x square so this part i have multiplied what about this otherwise minus into minus will be plus i times y minus 1 into y plus 2 whole divided by this will be common right this will be x square plus y minus 1 whole square now I can take this part. So imaginary part means whatever are the coefficients. So entire th of this is this. So I can write x square plus. Let's just expand this. This is y square minus 2y. Uh, so minus y plus 2y. This would be nothing but plus y minus 2. Correct. This is y square minus y 
वाई स्क्वायर प्लस टू वाई माइनस वाई इज वाई माइनस टू होल डिवाइडेड बाई दिस इज अगेन एक्स स्क्वायर प्लस वाई स्क्वायर माइनस टू वाई प्लस वन दैट इज इक्वल टू माइनस वन आई कैन राइट सो वॉट विल हैपन नो एक्स स्क्वायर प्लस वाई स्क्वायर प्लस वाई माइनस टू इक्वल्स टू माइनस एक्स स्क्वायर माइनस वाई स्क्वायर प्लस टू वाई माइनस वन सो जस्ट टेक इट टू दी अदर साइड सो यू विल गेट टू एक्स स्क्वायर प्लस टू वाई स्क्वायर आई एम जस्ट टेकिंग एवरीथिंग देयर माइनस वाई माइनस वन इक्वल टू जीरो सो बेसिकली माई सर्कल इक्वेशन नाउ इज एक्स स्क्वायर प्लस वाई स्क्वायर माइनस वाई बाई टू माइनस वन बाई टू इक्वल टू जीरो सो जी इज माइनस वन बाई फोर सी इज माइनस वन बाई टू अंडर रूट ऑफ वन बाई सिक्सटीन माइनस ऑफ माइनस इज प्लस वन बाई टू सो एट प्लस वन नाइन बाई सिक्सटीन आई एम गेटिंग दिस इज नथिंग बट थ्री बाई फोर so this is how easily you can get this by just using the fundamental concepts of complex numbers the last question i will take up in complex numbers is if z equal to i times i plus root 2 then they are asking us what is z power 4 plus 4z cube plus 6z square plus 4z all right so this is one more important type of question which we did discuss so let's see how to do it first things first what i can do is i can just expand this right i square is what minus 1 plus root 2 i and this minus 1 let me take it to the other side so this is z plus 1 equal to root 2 i all right so now what i can do is can i just square on both sides this is z square plus 2z plus 1 if i square this will be 2i square which is nothing but minus 2 so basically i will be getting z square plus 2z plus 3 equal to 0 correct so now how can i solve this further okay so i know z square plus 2z plus 3 equal to 0 now what if i square on both sides again if i square on both sides what i will get is because the hint in the question is you need in terms of power four so let's see if we can simplify this expression a little z square whole square is what z power four a square plus b square is what this is 4 z square plus c square is what this is 9 plus 2ab 2 into 2 is 4z cube 2bc 6 12z plus 6z cube so sorry 6z square this is equal to 0 we know correct now look at the question look at the expression which we have what is the question given to us z power 4 is there here also z power 4 is there 4z cube is there here also 4z cube is there 6z square is there here also 6z square is there 4z is not there so this can i write it as 8z plus 4z so in this way 4z also we will get so whatever i put in the boxes i need it correct so this is gone instead of this you are writing this i need whatever is given in the boxes so the remaining terms i can send it to the other side right so basically z power 4 plus 4z cube Plus six z square plus four z. I can write this as the remaining. Just send it to the other side. That is to the RHS minus four z square minus four z minus nine. Now you see it looks very simple, right? You already know z value. You can just square it. You can just substitute and simplify. So just substitute and simplify.
to get the answer. So what we have done is, is by just expansion, we reduced our effort a little. Hope you are understanding this. Okay. So with this, we finish the complex numbers based questions. So I have tried to discuss almost all the questions in complex numbers. Okay. So next, let us go to matrices type doubts. So again, we had discussed many concepts in matrices and some of you had asked me a lot of doubts in matrices as well. So let's get going with matrices. First things first, they had, uh, uh, we, we were asked few questions like this, that is finding the rank of a matrix. Finding the rank of a matrix. So I will tell you how to find out rank of any matrix. The first step is perform row operations. Second, perform column operations. So when you are performing row or column operations, we are performing so that you have to try to make rows as zeros. That means every element you are trying to make it zeros. Every element in the row you are trying to make it as zeros. Next, after performing row and column operations, after performing row or column operations, what we can do is count the number of non-zero rows. Count the number of non-zero rows. That will give us the rank of the matrix. That will give us the rank of the matrix. Okay. Let's do an example for this. So rank is given as, so suppose if A is a matrix like this, 1, 2, 3, 1, 1, 5, 2, 4 and 6. You have something of this sort, correct? So whenever we are having this, if they say find rank of A, rank is given by row basically. So there are various methods of doing this, but I feel this is the best possible method. So I want all of you to follow this method only. First things first. First step, what did I tell you? I have to follow all row operations. I have to try to make it as zero. So let's try to make row two as zero. Okay. So I will take row one as base row. So how do you make row two as zero? This is one one, right? So I can write row two such that row two minus row one. Same, row 3, I will try to make it 0. So row 3, how will it make it 0? This is 2, right? If I want to make this element also as 0, I can, I have to subtract with two types, right? So I can write R3 such that R3 minus 2 R1. Now this matrix is called as an augmented matrix. That means it can be a combination of any elements and it need not be a square matrix. So this is called as an augmented matrix. That means you are deriving that matrix out of some random data. So let's check this now. This is like 1, 2, 3 again. Now look at this. 1 minus 1 is 0. 1 minus 2 is minus 1. 5 minus 3 is 2. Now this is R3 minus 2 R1. 2 minus 2 is 0. 4 minus 4 is 0. 6 minus 6 is 0. Now my row operations are done. I have managed to perform the row operations. Next, what should I do? I have to do column operations. Column operations means what? All columns, C1, C2, C3 you have to take. Now again, I'll keep first column as the base. Can I write C2 such that C2 minus 2 C1? In that way, this becomes 0. C3 such that C3 minus 3 C1? In that way, this also becomes 0. So this becomes 1, 0, 0. 2 minus 2 is 0. Minus 1 minus 2 into something is 0. Minus 1 only 0 only. Now observe this. 
3 minus 3 is again 0. 2 minus something is 2 only. 0 minus something is 0 only again. So now you can again observe that here it is 2, here it is minus 1. So can I write C3 such that C3 plus 2 times C2. Now what will happen here? 1, 0, uh, sorry, 1, 0, 0, 0, minus 1, 0 as it is. 0 with 0 is 0, 2 plus 2 is 0, 0 plus 0 is 0. Now observe, is this the final matrix? I got all possible zeros, right? Is it possible to make this as 0? No. Is it possible to make this as 0? No. Element to element we try to compare and make it as zeros. So now last step what do you have to do? You have to count. So all row and column operations are done. Just count. So if you are counting now, this is a 0 row. So this I can't count. This is a non-zero row. What do you mean by a 0 row? Zero row means all elements in the row are zeros. So look at this. The third row is a zero row. We need to count number of non-zero rows. So here one element is definitely there. So two ticks and one cross. So there are two rows which don't have all elements as zeros. Some elements are zeros. It doesn't matter. All are not zeros. So the rank of A is nothing but 2. Sometimes what they will say is, instead of giving 6, they will get, give K and they will give you rank. So they will say, find the value of K. So everywhere you are doing, here you will get K by 3, K minus 3. So here you will get K minus 6 basically. So at the end, you know that last element should also be 0, right? So you have to think in the reverse logic. Reverse logic is what number of rows are 3. They give rank as 2. That means one of the row is 0. So obviously last row only can be 0. So k minus 6 equal to 0, I can write k value as 6. So in this way, the rank based sums you can do very easily. Hope you have understood this rank based sum as well. So this was the only question which I think we didn't discuss. Right? And the rest of the models we have done. So I will give you a few more hints. For theoretical questions, what you can do is, for theory based, just assume matrices, right? So just assume the type of matrices. Just assume the type of matrices. Right? So we have seen that, right? In definitions along with examples, if they say symmetric, if they say skew symmetric, just assume, substitute, and verify options. Understood? So, in this way, and uh, there are few more things. Inverse doesn't exist mean debt is zero. Inverse doesn't exist means debt is zero. And they say uh, linear, non-linear means debt equal to zero, debt not equal to zero. So more or less, these are the same things which you have to uh, uh, use to solve the question. So we have done many such questions in matrices. So if there is anything else, you can always come back to me with doubts. Okay. And we can discuss those accordingly. Right. So basically most of you had asked me this finding rank. So I have given an example to tell you to solve. So with this complex numbers as well as matrices, which are one or two of the most important topics in algebra is over. Thanks a lot everyone for joining. I will see you all in the next class.